All right, so in this video, we're going to take a look at um, conditions for proving a parallelogram. Uh, so we're going to take um, the main properties that we've learned before and use this to determine whether or not what we're looking at, what the quadrilateral we're looking at, is a parallelogram. It might look like a parallelogram, but you always want to trust the markings on the diagram. So the first thing you can do is show that both pairs of opposite sides are parallel. So if both pairs of opposite sides are parallel, that is a parallelogram. You can also prove or show that both pairs of opposite sides are congruent. So either one of these will work. Both pairs are parallel, both pairs are congruent. You have a parallelogram. If both pairs of opposite angles are congruent, then you have a parallelogram. And you're not proving all of these, just one. If you can prove any one of these, you have a parallelogram. Okay. Um, the fourth one, you can um, show that one pair of opposite sides is both congruent and parallel. It has to be the same side. You can't have like the top and the bottom congruent and the left and the right side parallel. That won't work. It has to be the exact same side, parallel and congruent. And then um, using rules like the alternate interior angles and things like that, you can actually go through and prove the other side, um, either congruent or parallel. Um, so um, the last thing is to show that the diagonals bisect each other. Okay. And again, it doesn't mean that the diagonals are congruent. This diagonal going from left to right is not congruent from this one going from right to left. They are not congruent to each other. They cut each other in half. Okay, they bisect each other. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look at four examples here. So the given information marked on each figure below classify um, um, each quadrilateral as a parallelogram or not necessarily a parallelogram. Note that each figure is drawn like a parallelogram, but you should not rely on the figure um, how the figure is drawn and determine your answers. So what that means is don't trust the diagram. Don't just look at it and go, yep, that looks like a parallelogram. They all look like parallelograms, okay? You need to look at the markings and determine whether or not you can um, determine its parallelogram from there and using those five properties from the top part of your page there, okay? So the first one, we have this parallelogram. We have the top and the bottom are, con are not congruent, but parallel. Those little arrows mean parallel, all right, so we have alternate interior angles are congruent. So I can see that this angle kind of B up here, it's not just angle B, but on this side. Um, and then this angle down here congruent, they are alternate interior angles. Since we are know they're alternate interior angles, I can now say alternate interior angles are congruent. So the lines that they both, they're touching here, because it's going from alternate, the transversal to parallel, it's going from transversal to parallel, they are congruent. So AC is congruent to DB. Not congruent, sorry, parallel um, to DB. So you can see my little parallel marks popping up here. So the, t um, the top and the bottom are parallel and the left and the right are parallel. So I have two pairs of parallel sides, opposite sides are parallel. So this is a parallelogram. Uh, so with this one, I have consecutive sides are congruent. So I have this, this top and the right side are congruent, and then I have the bottom and the left side are congruent. So this one, consecutive um, congruent sides does not prove parallel lines. Um, I don't have opposite sides congruent, and there's nothing else that I can prove about this, this parallelogram right now or this quadrilateral. So it's not necessarily a parallelogram. All right, so if we look at this one, so this was actually looks like one of the cases that we saw um, on that last slide where I have one pair of parallel and one pair of congruent. But remember, in order for this to work, they have to be the exact same side. So it either have to be the top was both congruent and parallel, or the left and the right were both congruent and parallel. So this information does not work. We can't prove it with just this information. All right, so on this last one, I can see that these two angles across are congruent, and these two bottom angles are congruent. And they're kind of what I would call consecutive angles. It's one right after the other. These are not alternate interior angles. Um, these are more consecutive. Now, if you remember the isosceles triangle theorem, I could actually prove that all opposite sides were congruent here. So, um, but that would give me something that looks just like this one up here, where I'd have kind of the, the left and the top are congruent, and then I can do the same thing here, where I can go opposites, and I can prove that the bottom and the, the right side are congruent, but that doesn't really help me at all, um, as far as proving this is a parallelogram. So, consecutive angles are Congruent does not prove that it's a parallelogram. So this is not necessarily a par parallelogram. Um, so that's the 
using the kind of five properties there to help us determine whether or not a quadrilateral is a parallelogram. I hope that helped and I'll see you in the next video.